In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in order to master blockchain development. All right, we're gonna start from square one and go all the way to advanced and get the bird's eye view. So, you know, whether you're a beginner uh, or you've been doing this a while, there's gonna be something for everybody, all right? So if you're new around here, I'm Gregory from DAP University. Click that like button down below, click subscribe. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. So if you're a complete beginner, where should you start? Well, I highly recommend starting by learning the Solidity programming language for writing Ethereum smart contracts. So there's a few reasons why. Uh, the first reason is Solidity is pretty easy to learn, all right? It looks a lot like Python, uh, C++, and JavaScript, so it's pretty beginner friendly. Two, it's one of the core skills of being a blockchain developer. So if you learn that first, you can develop that skill as you go and learn all the other skills, you know, surrounding this, all right? It's going to teach you the fundamentals about how to develop for the blockchain. All right, number three is that it's really easy to get started uh, developing Solidity smart contracts straight in your browser without having to set anything up on your computer, all right? That's honestly one of the most important reasons to start. So I'll show you how to do that, okay? You can go to remix.ethereum.org. All right, this is a browser-based IDE or just a you know, browser-based editor, essentially, for Ethereum smart contracts. And you can do a whole lot more inside of here than just write them. You can, you know, compile them, deploy them, uh, debug them. Uh, Remix is a really great tool that I highly recommend you check out. I've got several tutorials on my channel uh, that show you how to do that. All right. So this is an example of a smart contract inside here. This is a uh, voting smart contract. This is the ballot. You can see that here. This is all the solidity code for it. Okay. And you can, you know, store files and remix. It's really great. All right. So that's step number one as a complete beginner. Start there. Okay. So now once you've moved beyond that, you'll want to actually be able to set up your computer for blockchain development, do everything on your local machine. And I'm going to show you all the tools that allow you to do that. So you'll still write Ethereum smart contracts, but instead of doing it in your browser uh, with Remix, I would move on to using the Truffle framework, all right? So Truffle is a suite of tools that's used for uh, developing dApps and smart contracts. You can write tests with them, you can write client-side applications, scripts, deploy them, all kinds of stuff, okay? So I've got several tutorials that show you how to do that, but um, I'll kind of just walk you through you know, what that looks like. So this is a Truffle project here. You can see it's got a bunch of files and you know you can store your smart contracts inside of here. Um, you can configure it to look however you want to. I've got a token smart contract inside of here, okay? And you know Truffle allows you to do a lot of stuff with these smart contracts. So you can write tests. I've got tests for this smart contract right here, all right? So tests are really important when you're writing smart contracts because you know the code can't change whenever you put it on the blockchain, all right? And you wanna make sure it's gonna be you know exactly what you want it to be before it gets there. It's not like building other types of applications where you can just push code and make changes you know on the fly. You wanna make sure everything's perfect before it goes live, all right? So tests are critical, all right? So also what you can do with Truffle is you can uh, write scripts for the smart contract. So if you need to do anything over and over again, with it, you can write um, scripts that way. So you'll notice that uh, this is not Solidity, right? This is JavaScript. So that would be the second programming language that I highly recommend learning um, on your path to mastering blockchain development, all right? So JavaScript is going to be the next programming language that's going to be useful in a variety of contexts as a blockchain developer. So, you know, inside Truffle, like I showed you for writing tests against the smart contracts, but also, uh, you know, writing client-side applications, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So JavaScript is a must if you want to become a blockchain developer. All right. So the next thing you need to know how to do is, you know, you need to put your smart contracts somewhere whenever you're testing them or, you know, deploying them. So for development purposes, I highly recommend the Ganache personal blockchain. All right. So this will allows you to basically spin up a blockchain on your computer uh, really quickly. It's just a point and click blockchain that has a nice user interface like this, all right? You get a bunch of accounts for free and you get, uh, they come preloaded with Ethereum cryptocurrency, all right? This is not worth anything on the main uh, Ethereum network. <laughs> Don't get too excited, but um, it will give you this for testing purposes so that you can pay gas fees and stuff like that, all right? And when you're developing on your computer, you're definitely going to need a terminal of some kind. All right, the terminal is going to be sort of your workhorse. Um, anytime you're creating new files, creating new projects, running Truffle commands, like uh, if you're running tests, you'll use like Truffle uh, test or Truffle compile or something like that, and you'll see all of the output in your terminal for your test, all right? So this isn't actually configured right now. <laughs> I got an error whenever I did that, so don't worry. Um, but... Uh, a to uh, sorry, a terminal is going to be a very invaluable tool for you as you you know start to master blockchain development. 
and also your text editor, right? So I showed you, you know, uh, this truffle project here. So this text editor that I'm using is Sublime Text. That's just the one that I've used for a really long time. Uh, there are definitely other text editors out there that a lot of people really like. Like right now, a VS Code is a really popular text editor. Um, and also, um, like Atom is a really popular text editor. It seems like a new one kind of comes out every few years, but I've just been using Sublime Text for a really long time um, and I'm very happy with it and have, haven't really found much of a good reason to change. Um, so I'm sure somebody else, you know, watching this video <laughs> wants to convince me otherwise, but it, it works for what I want it to do. The bottom line is if it works, you like it and you're productive in it, then use it. All right, once you've finished developing your smart contracts on your actual computer, you need to deploy them to a blockchain. So instead of using Ganache for everything, just, you know, for, for, testing purposes, you actually want to put it on a real blockchain. You can do that a few different ways. Uh, one, you can use Remix, which I showed you earlier. You can actually like compile this smart contract and uh, you can run it and you can put it on the blockchain, right? You can compile it and do it that way. Uh, you can use MetaMask, essentially. This is an Ethereum wallet uh, to you know deploy to the blockchain that way. Or you can deploy it from your Truffle project, right? So you can go to your Truffle project and write a migration, Right, you can do like this, and uh, this will allow you to put your smart contracts on the blockchain. But if you do that, you need a connection to it. So you would use an Ethereum node. So how do you get an Ethereum node? Well, you can use a service like Infura, which will give you an Ethereum node for free. You just sign up and get a URL uh, to talk to the blockchain. You can put that URL inside your Truffle project uh, and just run uh, Truffle Migrate. And that will deploy the smart contract from your computer to a blockchain. And you'll be able to look at it on a website like a Etherscan, right? This is a block explorer for looking at smart contracts. So you can look at any ERC-20 token. This would be an example of a smart contract. You'll just see some kind of random ERC-20 token here. All right, and then let's see, read contract. This would be an example of a source code that's actually uh, you know, on the blockchain. All right, so here's the actual copy of the source code. Okay, so after you have you know developed smart contracts on your computer, what else might you want to do? Well, you'll probably want to build some sort of client side inter of interface to interact with them. Whether you're building a full stack DAP or just some sort of interface to you know uh, demo your smart contract, there's a lot of different ways to do this. But I highly recommend uh, creating some sort of client side. Uh, website essentially to talk to it. So the framework that I like for building user interfaces is React.js, right? So you're going to have to do this in JavaScript and a JavaScript framework is a really great way to uh, manage your JavaScript front ends without having to write a bunch of code yourself. And that's exactly what a Ra React allows you to do. All right. So I've got several tutorials um, that show you how to use React. I also teach React inside my blockchain developer bootcamp, which you can find out more about uh, with the link down below. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like. A lot of other people like uh, Vue, um, let's see, also Angular and several more, okay. But whenever you wire your uh, client side application up to your smart contract on the blockchain, you're gonna need some sort of library to do it, to talk to Ethereum. And that's exactly what Web3.js does, all right? So I've got several tutorials that show you to Web3, sorry, show you how to use Web3.js, uh, but essentially this is the main JavaScript library for interacting with Ethereum. And it's gonna turn your client side websites into um, blockchain websites, really, all right? Okay, so once you've figured out how to create full stack applications, there are a few other tools that you might need, right? Not always, but this is gonna get into more advanced territory and I'm gonna show you these right now, okay? So sometimes in blockchain projects, you might find that you also need to run some sort of web server uh, to talk to. And um, there are a few different ways to do this. Like these web servers might need to talk to the blockchain. Maybe you talk to them directly through your application through some other means. Um, but there's a few ways to build backends. So one way is to use something like uh, JavaScript and write, use Express.js or some sort of other framework where you actually write JavaScript on the server. And you could use something like Web3.js. Like let's say you needed... Um, a backend just to source some sort of data, what they call off chain, like maybe your smart contract is responsible for some information. And maybe that backend needs to pull some information from that smart contract and index it on a regular basis. Or maybe you just need to store some other kind of data in your app that doesn't have to be on the blockchain. And if you already know JavaScript, Express is a good way to get started, right? You can build a uh, complete, you know, backend web service with this um, and use Web3.js inside of it, okay? 
So another way to do it would be to use like uh, the Python programming language, all right? And there are a few different options for you. You could do something like Django, which is a, uh, you know, web application development framework that you can build uh, Python backends in, or you can use something like uh, Flask, which is a little bit lighter weight and kind of a different uh, approach to building backend services with Python, okay? And uh, both of these will allow you to use a Python library called, uh, let's see, Web3, sorry, Web3.py. So this will be actually the Python version of Web3. All right, so we saw Web3.js a minute ago. This is Web3.py. All right, I've got a couple tutorials that show you how to use this as well. All right, so when you're kind of getting onto that more advanced uh, part of blockchain, this is something that could also be useful to you. All right, so now I want to make a mention of, you know, how do you get these microservices or these backends onto the web so that you can use them in more advanced applications, right? And I'm gonna show you some tools that I use, okay? So uh, I like Heroku for quickly deploying backends without much configuration, all right? Depending on what you need to do, Heroku is a really nice and easy way to go. It supports stuff like Django, um, you know, Node.js out of the box, and you can sort of just get started fast without too much hassle, okay? Another way, if you want uh, something a little cheaper, or maybe you want something that um, you have a little more control over, you could use something like Amazon Web Services, right? Something like Amazon EC2, which basically allows you to create a um, you know server instance in the cloud that runs Linux or something like that, which you can put your own projects on. All right, I've used this quite a bit. And sometimes I'll even use this in tandem with uh, Docker. All right, so Docker is a little bit more of an advanced tool. Essentially, what it allows you to do is run um, kind of like a virtual machine uh, for a development environment, okay? So Docker sort of the, solves the problem of like, I have uh, my environment configured and my project works on my computer, but it doesn't work on a server or, or it doesn't work on my friend's computer or it doesn't work here, right? It essentially, uh, it does something called, uh, it works based on this idea of containers, right? They call it containerizing the environment or containerizing your services. And essentially you can create these little environments for your apps to run in and you can move that container with an image uh, from you know one environment to the next. So you could set up Docker on something like Amazon EC2 and set it up just like your local computer, all right? And all you have to do is deploy your you know image and uh, set up your container and it's really easy to move your app code from one thing to the next. And Docker's you know becoming very popular across the software development world, uh, especially in blockchain, right? So um, I hope you all liked this, all right? This is kind of the path um, to go from beginner all the way to advanced and all the tools that you might need in order to master blockchain development. So I hope you all like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And if you're serious about learning how to become a blockchain developer, learn to use some of these tools like uh, Solidity, Smart Contracts, React.js. Um, also didn't mention Redux, that's something else. Uh, then uh, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappadiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.